Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, great to be back at Laracon. I'm having a very fun time here, and I hope all of you uh, do too. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to handle media in a, in a Laravel application. So I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a partner and a developer at an Antwerp company called Spasi. Uh, like most of you, I'm on Twitter. My handle is Freek Merze. Um, and those four links are my, more, my main uh, four uh, online presences. So I have a company called Spasi. I also have a side project called Odir. It's an uptime and mixed content uh, monitoring tool. Um, I'm also organizing a conference Full Stack Europe, which will be held somewhere uh, next year in Antwerp. And I also have my own personal blog, merze.be, where I talk about modern PHP development and Laravel. Before we dive in uh, to the media library itself, let's talk a little bit about open source software. Uh, like Sean already mentioned, my company is uh, busy with creating uh, lots and lots of open source packages, many of which are uh, targeted to, uh, to Laravel. And you'll find a big list of all the open source packages on our website. I'm pretty sure there will be somebody uh, something there for, uh, for everybody. Uh, here are some statistics on our open source effort. We now have uh, 200 more or less public uh, uh, repositories on GitHub. In 2016, we had uh, 800,000 downloads. Then in 2017, 5 million. And right now, we have 17 million downloads of our packages. And they're being downloaded for like uh, yeah, 1,250,000 times a month, which uh, if you keep in mind that Spasi is only a very small company, uh, we are very happy with the, uh, those numbers. Uh, for the people that are interested in why did we start with this and how we are doing this at our company, I wrote a, a blog article about that. That's uh, the latest link. Now, those packages are not entirely free. They have a special license called Postcardware, which means that if um, one of our packages gets in your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. And this is our address currently missing more than 16 million postcards. If you send us a postcard, we'll publish it uh, on our website. So here you can be in, a, in the Hall of Fame with the uh, other Spasi packages licensees. So with that out of the way, let's talk about media. What is the problem that we are going to address here? Um, who here has ever had to handle with user uploaded content like uh, images or PDFs or stuff like that, attachments? Yeah, a lot of hands. Almost everybody comes across this problem uh, in, in their careers. So the problem here is that where are you going to store those files? How are you going to retrieve them? How are, going, how are you going to optimize uh, those assets um, uh, that, that users upload? Well, this isn't really rocket science. You can easily solve this all yourself. But it's really boring code to write. Um, and you need the same things in nearly every project. You need like image and uploading handling capabilities. And if you do it like quick and dirty, that's fine. That will work. But in the next project, you will maybe do it slightly different. And when you have to come back to an older project, then you need to know all the little details, how you solved it there. So it can become a big mess over time. So to the rescue comes uh, one of our packages called Laravel Media Library. Now, who here is already using our media library? OK, a couple of hands, but a lot of people that uh, don't yet, you're in the right talk. And the people that are using it, you're also in the right talk. We are going to show some, uh, some new stuff uh, here. Um, so Laravel Media Library is a package of ours. What can it do? Summarized to one small sentence, it can associate files with eloquent models. So like uh, a blog post you can attach images to that. And you can easily uh, ask Laravel, hey, blog post, show me all your images. 
It can also group media into collections. So if your blog post has some download items, you can put them in a separate collection called download items and fetch those separately. It can also handle image conversions. So if your user uploads a big file and you only need a small thumbnail for like in a list view, the uh, media library can easily generate thumbnails for you. It can also use multiple file systems. So if big files get uploaded, you can easily use the power of the media library to store them on uh, external file systems like S3. And under the hood, uh, Laravel's native file system is used. So if you configured it as a Laravel disk, and, uh, and there's obviously then a fly system driver for it, then you can use it in the media library. But it can do lots of interesting things more. It can also optimize uh, converted images. So when uh, images get uploaded, the media library will uh, apply a tiny bit of compression, and it will also remove all the metadata from it to make it uh, just a tiny bit smaller. It can also uh, handle uh, various file types, like, uh, like PDFs. It can generate thumbnails for, for those. But there are a lot of other file types as well, like, uh, for instance, Office documents. Media Library doesn't know how to create a thumbnail from an Office document. But there are custom image generators in there. And a custom image generator is just a class where the media library will ask, hey, here's uh, a, Word, a Word file or, an, or another kind of file, and you are responsible of generating the image to that. So there is an easy plugin architecture to generate thumbnails for other files. You can also easily customize the directory structure. By default, the media library will just uh, use uh, incremental numbers to, to store files. So the first file goes into a folder named one, the second one in folder named two. But for some people, they want to hide that fact a little bit, how big their media library is. And you can customize uh, what that directory uh, should be called. So there is a clause in there that is responsible for generating the, uh, the directory name. So you can use, for instance, like a UID to store your media in. So nobody knows how much media you've got on your disk. And it also has uh, capabilities of adding custom attributes to, uh, to a media. So for, uh, for instance, for an image, you can uh, store uh, which um, photo camera was used or who took, uh, took the photo. We've uh, got a lot of documentation about this package. So everything you're going to hear in this talk, it's also documented somewhere there. So if you are going to try the package, head over to the documentation if you have any questions. The package also uh, is becoming quite popular. Um, it has been downloaded for well over half a million times now. So it's, it's pretty robust. We got a lot of support from the community in this, and a lot of bugs have already been solved. Ah, something about those, uh, those little dips in the, in the graph. That is uh, Christmas and New Year. So nobody's working on Christmas and New Year. I can talk a lot about this package, but I think it's best if you just get a feel of how it will work. So the rest of the talk, I'm just going to yeah, demo it to you so you can learn how it, how it will work. And we will start off with some simple examples, and then we will uh, ramp it a bit up. So let me make it a little bit bigger for you guys. So we're here in a, in a standard uh, Laravel uh, application. I've already installed the, the media library into it. And um, we have one model here called the article model. And if I go to that model, then you can see yeah, it extends model. It implements an interface given by our package. It also has a trait applied on it, uh, supplied by our package. And I've uh, added a little helper uh, function in here to uh, easily demo stuff to you. I also have a, a routes file. And all the demos are basically here in the routes file. So um, I also have a little command here called uh, php artisan demo. 
and with this command, I can easily just visit uh, those routes, so we can easily demo stuff. So the first uh, demo that we are going to do is how do you add media to the media library? Well, it's very simple. We are going to create a new model here. And if you want to attach media to a model, you simply call add media. You give it to a path to a media. And you call to media collection just to add it. So let's try that now. Um, add media to, to library. We visited that, that route. Um, let's take a look at what uh, happened in uh, the database. It's very small, and I don't know how to make this bigger, so I'm going to describe it to you. So here I am in the articles mo model. This is just the article that was just created. It only has an ID. And if I go to media here, here uh, we can see that one media was created. The model type is, uh, is an article. And um, we can see that it's stored on a disk, and there are some properties here as well. The main thing, the main takeaway is we stored a reference to that file in the database here. Now, how can you retrieve uh, a path to that database? Well, let me open up Tinker here. And if I do article last, then I just have that article I just created. And you can get to all the media of, uh, of a model by calling get media on it. And now we have a collection of media items. You can see here that the model type is article, the collection name is default, here's the name of, of the file. So that's how you get an instance to it. Because you often uh, want to have the first media of it, we have a helper method for that called get first media. And you can see here that we now just have uh, a media object of it. And on a media object, you can get a URL to that one. And here you can see the URL to, uh, to the file. If you want to have the full path, then you can uh, get get path. Then you have the full path to, uh, to that image, should you need it. And there are also some shortcuts for that. If you uh, want to get the URL to the first media, you can just do get first media URL, and you get the same thing. So that's the basic one-on-one -on -one how you uh, should, should use the package. It's very simple now. Let's move over to, uh, oh, Neil, let me uh, say, this, uh, say this one first. So here we uh, added a media using a path. Um, but in real life, uh, users will upload stuff. And there are lots of helpers uh, how you can add media. And one of the most common ones is add media from request. So if there is a form coming in, you can just do add media from request, give it the, the field uh, name here. And, uh, and it will be added to the media library. So no need to store it somewhere else on disk. We can get it directly from the request. OK, next one, using collections. So I have uh, talked about that media can be stored in different collections. That's we, what we are going to do now. We are going to create an article. We are going to add some media to it. And we are going to add it to a media collection called images. And next, we are going to add uh, some more media to it, a zip file. And we are going to add it in a collection called downloads. OK, let's, uh, let's visit that route. So using collections. And if I do the uh, get media on uh, the last article here, then it's empty, because there is nothing in the default collection. But if I want to have um, media from a specific collection, I can just do get media, give me the images. And sure enough, here is uh, that test image I just added. And if I do um, downloads, downloads, learn how to type here. And here can, you can see that we have uh, the zip here. And again, if you want to have uh, like the uh, URL to, to one of these, you can do uh, get first media images, get URL, and here we have the URL to uh, uh, the first media in the images collection. Simple. OK, let's move on. Yeah, if you um, delete um, the, the, the article, 
then uh, all media will be deleted and also all files on the file systems will be deleted as well. So you don't need to worry about that. The, the package will uh, manage uh, the cleanup of those files. Let me prove it to you. So I haven't uh, demoed that yet, but all the files are actually stored in the public directory here. That's where I configured it to be um, in that media directory. And you can see here that we have uh, directories per, uh, per media item. And that ID here, that is just the ID of the uh, media object in the database. So if I open uh, this up, then you can see here that the second file we added was that, uh, that GPEG here. And here we have that archive file. That test GPEG, by the way, that's this uh, magnificent place that we're, uh, we're all sitting in. So back to the matter. Let's uh, delete all models to prove that this is uh, being cleaned up. So I'm going to visit that route, delete models. And if I refresh here, all the media is, uh, is gone as well. So that's how that works. Let's ramp it up a little bit. I've said that the media library can uh, generate thumbnails for you. Let's do that now. Let's see how that works. So if I go to my article model, I can define which conversions should be made if media is added to, uh, to that model. You just have to add a function here. Let me type it. Uh, register media conversions. That's how it's called. And here you can add a media conversion. Let's do that now. This add media conversion. And you should give it the name. I'm going to name it uh, thumb, short for thumbnail. And then you can just tack on what kind of manipulations that you want. So here you can say the width of this conversion should be 400, and the height should be 400 as well. Now there are a lot of, lots of other manipulations that, uh, that you can do here. Um, you can blur it, you can border it, you can uh, change the brightness, the contracts, you can crop a little bit, you can change the device pixel ratio. There's a, there's a lot here. You can even add watermarks here. Okay. But we are just going to uh, do this width and this height thing. OK. Um, let's go back to the routes file and visit that route using media conversions. Using media conversions. OK. Now, a new media was added. And if I open up the media folder here, we have uh, a new media here. And we have the, the original file here. But we also have a directory with conversions. And here we have the test dump conversion. So we use the, um, for easy SEO purposes, we use the, the name of the original file and we attack on the name of the conversion. And if I open this up, you can see that it is in a rectangle of 400 by 400 here. So that's how that works. Now, how do you get a URL to that, uh, to that thumbnail? Let's try to figure that out. So it's actually very simple. Um, let me check if we are in the right media collection here. Yeah, images. So you get URL to the original one with get URL. And if you want to have a URL to a conversion, you just give it the conversion name here, thump. And now you have the URL to the, to the conversion. It's, uh, it's as simple as that. Of course, you can have in your article model, uh, multiple media conversions. So you can uh, set here as many media conversions as you like. That's how that, uh, that works. Let's go back to, um, to the web file. I'm not going to demo this for, uh, to, to keep the, uh, the talk a little bit sized down. But by, uh, by default, all these, all these conversions are queued. So you can uh, just, in the uh, configuration file, you can say set the name of the queue, and then all the conversions will be queued. Um, so your, your request will be fast. Now, if you um, expect that after your request, 
uh, a thumbnail immediately is created. For example, in an admin interface, you can do that as well. You can just say for this conversion, hey, even though I configured the queue, queue just don't queue this one, do this in the, in the same request. And it'll still be fast enough for like smallish thumbnail operations. OK. Let's dive a little bit further into that web file. Optimized images. So I've said that the media library will um, uh, optimize images by performing a little bit of compression and removing all the metadata. Let's prove that I'm not a liar and see that it actually makes a difference. So we um, already added the thumbnail uh, here, uh, test thumb, and it is uh, 29 uh, kilobytes in size. If I go to my article here, I can also say um, non-optimized. So by default, it will, it will optimize it. But in some cases, you don't want to optimize it. Imagine that you have a project where you have like um, uh, artwork or something like that, and it should be really pixel, pixel perfect. You can't touch, touch the image at all. Then you can use uh, the, the non-optimized version. OK, let's um, visit that route and, and uh, learn if um, it actually makes a difference. So we are here with optimized images. Optimized images. There's a new one here. And it should be greater than 29 kilobytes. And sure enough, this is a little bit bigger. See? But by default, we will shave off those extra kilobytes. So that's how the optimization works. I'm going to remove the non-optimized for now. OK, back to the routes file. I have no idea what comes next, so for me it's a surprise as well what, uh, what we're going to do. OK, the PDF conversions. So I've said that uh, the media library can create thumbnails of PDFs by default. Let's, uh, let's prove that. So we are going to add a PDF uh, to, uh, to the media library. I have here an amazing PDF of sponsorship opportunities of Laracom. Let's visit PDF conversions. And it takes a while because generating a PDF for uh, generating a thumbnail for a PDF is slightly slower. And if I open up the uh, original file here, you can see here Laracon EU sponsor sponsorship opportunities, all good. And if I go into that conversions directory, you can see that we have like a little thumbnail of that as well. So that's how that works. Easy. Um, Let's go back to article uh, or the web file. What are we going to do next? Customizing the pod. So I've said that um, by default, the media library just uses the ID of a media object as a, uh, as a name of, for this directory. But you can easily customize that if you don't want that information exposed. You can do that with a class named pod generator, which is a uh, a class that generates pods. So it's actually very simple. It's a class uh, that uh, implements an interface that we give you. And you just, we give you a media, and you just give us uh, a string of the pod. And in this case, I've just md 5 the ID uh, together with, uh, with the application key, and that's, and that's it. You can also um, add a custom pod for the conversions. You can even change this to, to something else so that your path is, is really custom. Now, that um, path generator, you should register it in the configuration file of the media library. Let's go over what's inside the, the config file. We have a disk name here. It's where the media will be stored. We have things like maximum file size, that queue name that I said, how the S3 URL should be um, uh, should be generated. Um, responsive images for later on. Ah, and here we have that path generator. Here we can just set the class a name to that path generator. Let me see if it's right. App services media library path generator. This is it. So I'm going to use that to generate uh, URLs now. Let's go back to the web to, uh, to see what it was named, customizing the pod. 
Um, and let's visit that route. While we go back to the media here, okay, customizing the part. Let's take a look here. And sure enough, you can see here that we used uh, uh, a, a larger uh, name for our directory. And if we go to uh, article Tinker here and get the last URL to the original file, and we're not using a collection name here, you see that it just uses that, uh, uh, that larger uh, URL. So that's how that works. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Um, let's take a look at how we can use uh, another file system. It's actually very easy. You uh, just have to uh, add the name of the disk you configured in the file system's configuration as a second parameter to, uh, to the to media collection method. So here we are going to add media to the method collection in a collection named images on the disk S3. Let's see if that works and that the Wi-Fi gods are happy. I have Wi-Fi here. So um, I also have open, if I'm prepared this right, a transmit window. So this is what is stored. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory here. Let's refresh it. So this is what is in my S3 bucket at the moment. It's, it's nothing. If I uh, visit routes using S3, it takes a little while. The Wi-Fi gods are happy. And if I refresh here, you can see here that we have um, the image uploaded. And we even have that custom uh, path going on here. And if I visit uh, that route, no, if I uh, go to my Tinker session and generate a URL to that, let me just uh, have an article. Oh no, I did something wrong here. Let's try to using some brain power here. What is wrong? Hmm. Normally, I would expect it to just give it a URL. Ah, I know it. I forgot to uh, use the collection name here. I've put it here in URL, but it is not a media conversion but it's an image collection, so it should go here. And yeah, you can't read it because it's in, it's in blue, but let's do it like this. You can see here that we have a URL to, uh, to S3. And so this is really powerful. In your views, you can just uh, go on using uh, this method, get URL, and just don't care about where it's stored. The media library will just get the, generate the right URL for you. OK, let's do something else. Um, defining media collections. Defining media collections is a new concept that was added to, um, to the latest version of the media library. Um, you've seen that media collections right now are just the name, images, downloads. But you can easily add a little bit of behavior to a media collection as well. Let's do that now. So I'm going to the article model here back again, and I'm going to call a function here, call register uh, media collections. And here I can add a media collection. Add media collection. I'm going to name it big files, because I'm going to put big files in here. And here I can say, for this collection, everything that goes into this collection, use the disk S3. So, if we create another article, we are going to add some media into it, and we are going to add it to the media library in big files. Even though I don't specify S3 here, it will be stored in S3. Let's try it now. So defining media collections, that's it. And if everything is right, then we should have a second, uh, a second file in here, and it just uh, popped up. So with that media collection thing, you can do a few interesting things more. Uh, you can also use it for a single file collection. And what is a single file collection? 
imagine that for your users, you upload avatars. They probably want to have like just their latest avatar. If they upload a new image, the old one can be deleted. And this is what that does. If you have a single file collection and you put an image in there, the old one will be automatically be, uh, be removed. There is also another thing that, uh, that you can do. Um, you can call accept file on it, with ex which, which accepts a closure, which gets a file object, file. And here you can return, for instance, if the file size is uh, greater than this many bytes, and all files smaller than that size, uh, if you try to add it to the media collection, an exception will be thrown. You're sure that all the files being added here will be greater than that number, or smaller than that number. If you want to have like a sm small files collection, you can say, hey, the file size should be smaller than that. So that's how you can enforce what kind of files get into a collection. So that is register media collections. I'll remove it for now. OK, let's dive a little bit further. Downloading a file. So your user has uploaded some files, and now he wants to download it again. How do we do that? Now, the media library makes this very, very easy. If you um, just return a media object from your controller, we will make uh, a proper response for it to download uh, that file. So here we are just going to create uh, another article. We are going to add some media to it. And by default, the media collection will just return the media that was just, just created. And we are just going to return it as a response, just that media object. So let's see what happens. Downloading a file. And my browser pops up. And you can see here that we have uh, like the, the download here. So here is uh, that sponsorship opportunities uh, thing that we just added. So it's really easy to let your user download files. You can even uh, do this for uh, files that are on another file system, like for instance uh, S3. So here we are going to create another article, add media some to it, and we're going to create to uh, add it to S3. And then we are going to download that file from, uh, from S3. So let me uh, hit that route, downloading a file from S3. And sure, it takes a little bit, because this demo uploads a file, and then it will stream the file back from S3. And here it is. We went to S3 and back. So again, your controller shouldn't really mind on which file system that your media resides. Just return it, and we will just uh, give the proper download response. Now, this is a fun one. Um, in some projects, you don't want to let your user download just one file, but multiple files. And imagine the work you need to do for that. Um, you need to um, prepare those files a little bit. You probably are going to copy them into the uh, same directory. You're going to zip them on the server, and then let the user uh, download that zip or just um, uh, send them a mail with a link to that zip. Ugh. We're not going to do that. Here, we are just going to um, create some more, more media. We're going to add it to a media collection. And here, we are going to add it to the local media collection. We are going to create another file and add it to S3, so another file system. And what are we going to do here? We are going to create a media stream here. And the response should, should be named your files.zip. And we are going to add some media to it, namely all the media you created before. So a media item from a local disk and a media item from, uh, from S3. And what this thing will do is it will actually create a stream to the browser of the user. So there will be no zip creation on the file itself. It will stream the local file. And in the same stream, it will also st start streaming the file from S3, which is, which is really powerful. Let's see if, uh, if that works. So let's da hit that route, downloading multiple files. 
uh, here goes. It takes a little while because yeah, we upload to S3 and then we're going to stream back. I hope this will work. And yes, it's very small for you guys, but this is a zip file. And if I open it up here and open up the directory of the zip, you can get those files here. And so one file came from the local file system, the other one from, from S3. So it makes that really easy. There's no more codes from you guys needed except from, from this. So that works. OK, the, the last demo, responsive images. This is also something that was added in the, in the latest version of, uh, of the media library. And this is about uh, optimization for in which browser the, the images are viewed. Um, probably, if you're uh, working, if you're viewing images on a mobile device, you need like a small image. Uh, but on a desktop browser, you want to have the big image. Um, now, the media library has some um, some help for that to offer as well, in the form of responsive images. So I'm going to explain this uh, this slowly. Um, the first thing that the media library has to do is to actually generate those uh, responsive images. So it needs to generate the small image and the large image. And by default, we have a, an algorithm here in place that uh, generates conversions for files of which we predict that they will be 20% 20 20 smaller than the previous generation. So for big files, we have lots of different variations. And for a small file, we have only a few, few variations. So let's demonstrate that generating of the responsive images first. So to be sure that everything uh, will be working, uh, I'm sure it will work with a custom path generator, but I haven't rehearsed it. So I'm going to put this to null for a second. And I'm going to reset my demo. So my database is, uh, is all empty. And then I'm going to um, generate those, uh, those responsive images. So media is empty now. And if I hit that route with my demo, generate responsive images, it takes a while because it has to generate a lot of uh, different images. If I go to media here, we have the original one. We have the, the thumbnail one. But we also have the responsive images. And you can see here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. We tacked on the dimensions of the file here. And you can see here that it, that, it, uh, that it goes smaller and smaller. So this is like a very large one, the original one, I think. And this is like a small one. OK. So now we have generated those files. Let's see how they get, uh, get displayed by the media library in the browser. So I'm going to back to my routes file here. And I'm going to uh, hit this route showing responsive images. So what, uh, what we are going to do is we are just going to get the media from the, the last article. And we are uh, going to return as a response just a view in which we use that, uh, that media. So let's hit that route, showing responsive images. And here is the image. Um, I guess it's small for you guys, but I'll, I'll explain what, uh, what is going on. Um, if I inspect uh, this file here, the first thing that I'm going to demo is I'm going to make my network much, much slower. So here I'm going to um, pick uh, fast 3G. And I'm going to re reload the image and pay attention to what, uh, what happens. So we first see a blurred version immediately. And then it gets replaced by the, uh, the original file when it has been downloaded. You see this effect on medium blocks as well. Now, how do we manage this? Um, let's take a look at the HTML here. And I hope I can make it a little bit bigger. And there's yeah, just a lot of stuff going on here. We have uh, one image here that we display. And it uses a source set. 
Now, a source set is an attribute you might not be familiar with, but it has been along, it, it has been uh, along with us for, uh, for a very long time now. It's part of, uh, of the HTML standard. And where with a normal source attribute, you can just use uh, one image. With a source set attribute, you can actually um, specify multiple images. And how it works is that you first specify the URL to the image, and then you specify um, what the width of the client should be to uh, the minimum width should be to display this image. So this image is going to be used if your screen is, is, um, is larger than that. So these are all these um, responsive images that we just generated. And at the end, as a bonus, what the media library does, it will create an, an SVG of your image, which we will inline in the HTML. So this uh, SVG, that's that blurred image that you see. And it's immediately available when your page loads. So we can display that immediately. And the browser, it will replace it by one of those images when that image has been loaded. So you immediately have that blur thing. Your content will not uh, try, to, try to resize, and it will just feel, uh, feel right. Now, for, um, let's demonstrate that the browser will actually use those smaller images as well. So I'm going to make my browser window <laughs> even smaller so you can't see, see even less. Let me explain what is going on. I'm going to empty the cache here and reload. And now, um, let's inspect this. You can't see this, but uh, if you watch the video afterwards and you peek a little bit, you can see that the browser now uses the smallest image, image generation. And something that you can probably see is this is my network inspector here. If I make my browser a little bit more, more wide, you will see that it will actually try to download a larger image from that source that we just, uh, we just added. So let's make it a little bit wider. And you can see there are more requests here. And I, I dragged fast, so when, the, when it uh, started downloading an image and the uh, window became even bigger, it canceled that request and uh, went for the, for the right image. So now the bigger image is, is being displayed. So that's how the, the responsive images work. Now, um, the only thing that, that you had to do up until now was if you want to generate responsive images, you had to tack on uh, with responsive images here. But there is a little bit of more work to be done in this view. So we've seen uh, all this HTML being generated here. Let's see what you need to do to make this, uh, this actually happen. I'm going to uh, go to that uh, view file. So resources, views, and this is that view. Let's take a look what you need to do. This is all. You just need to put a media object between curly brackets so that we can output it, and we will generate all the necessary HTML for all the magic you just saw to happen. So it's really easy. Oh, I nuked it. You just have to uh, output the, the media here and you have to uh, tag on responsive images, and you have the full power of responsive images here. And if you want, want to do this manually, it's just a lot of work, and the media library just solves this, this all for you. So that's how the media library works. Um, let's get back to the presentation here. So the other session is already done, so we are going to start wrapping up too. Uh, here are a few resources that you can, uh, can check out about uh, the media library. So the third one, that is uh, also a video recording where I explain the main concepts uh, again if something wasn't clear in this talk. And the last one is the URL on, uh, on GitHub, so you can take a look at, at the secret sauce behind uh, this package. Um, we have other plans with this package. We are going to release some view components to make it very easy to, um, to upload stuff. We are thinking about the Nova tool uh, now as well to add a full-blown media library that is powered by, uh, by this package. 
Um, and we think of uh, releasing the view components somewhere this, this year already. The Nova tool can't say anything about it because it's still in, its, uh, in the early stages of, uh, of planning. Now, I've been babbling here the whole time, so you might think, hey, this Frey guy, he, he codes a lot, he does a lot. But this was actually a package uh, that was uh, the work of our entire team. So I couldn't really have done it uh, with, uh, without the help of, uh, of these guys. If you want to meet them, they're at uh, the boot of my company uh, behind uh, this stage. So that's all I had to say. I hope you enjoyed the talk and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.